Hey yo YouTube, it's your girl, Peep Plus 7. I decided instead of fighting my hair in that ponytail, just throw some water on it, give it a shake, and let it do whatever it wants to. It's usually happier that way anyway. In the meantime, I started working on, well, a secret project. I won't mention any details now because I don't want the wrong person to see it, know what's coming at them, and then there'll be no surprise when it's time for the surprise to be sprung. But in the meantime, it occurred to me that when I talk about a continental cast on or a back loop cast on, the newer knitters out there may not know exactly what I mean when I say that. So while I have it here, I'm going to show you. A continental cast on, you make a loop with the um, yarn, which will give you two ends. You take one end around your thumb, the other end is over, under, pull it off through. I'm going to do that slow because I know my camera gets a little jumpy. But you get the two yarns here. See that? Just let it rest in between your finger. It looks like almost, almost like a swing shot. The one in your thumb, you go under. You take it around the one on your first finger, which is over, and then just pull it on through. And that puts a stitch on the needle. The back loop that I sometimes use is just simply taking a loop of a yarn and you loop it like that. Everybody on the plant is familiar with that. The problem with the back loop, unless you're like, really working with lace, is every time you make a stitch, the slack becomes apparent and then you end up pulling it and trying to adjust it. Whereas the continental cast on looks like this on one side and it actually makes a row of pearl on the other side because you are essentially knitting your first row with your cast on. Plus, for people like me who have been knitting for 30 something years, it's just quicker. Because, I mean, literally, without even looking, I can do it. Ta da! I have been clocked at knitting basically um, 75 stitches a minute. And. I can probably go faster, I could probably go slower, well I know I can go slower, and I know I can go faster, but when it comes to creating certain types of stitches, I purposely go at a certain speed, like a mid-range, because the last thing you want to do is mess up in the middle of a cable stitch or a knitting pattern or whatever. So in the meantime, I just thought I'd share that with you, and my hair is going to finish drying. I'm probably going to pat it a couple of times to encourage it to shrink a little bit. Oh, that's another thing about shrinking. Somebody asked me, how do I get my hair to shrink on purpose? Um, apparently a lot of people, they end up with shrinkage after they wash their hair, but never control shrinkage. It's real simple. When you wish your hair, most people generally use very warm water or they use very cold water. If you want your hair to shrink, especially 50% or more, Go ahead and wash your hair the way you normally would. Rinse it the way you normally would with warm water. When I'm going to shrink my hair, I use water as hot as I can stand. Just hot as I can stand. It's not starting hot, of course, but, you know, hot as I can stand, which means it's very, very warm. And then when it's time to shrink it, sometimes I'll go ahead and, like, put it up here and put, like, a clip here to get it where I want it, and then put, you know, more water on the high side of the stand, because I use a rinsing picture so I can just literally pour it right over, and then I go directly behind it with water as cold as I can stand. I've actually been known to put ice in the picture, put the cold water in, so that way as soon as I'm done with the hot water, go behind it with the cold water. The reason is, hot water expands and relaxes the hair. Whereas cold water retracts. So if you have hair that's expanded and then contracted, it'll shrink. Normally when you wash your hair and it's expanded and relaxed, it'll curl up gently and you'll end up with a spiral pattern. But when you want to shrink and have a coily pattern, that cold water and that reaction is really what you want. So I hope this helps you. 
And I hope your little mini knitting lesson helped you. And y'all stay blessed. Bye now. Oh, by the way, my blog is purple butterfly dash people dot blogspot dot com. I'm people of seven on YouTube and Twitter and people elsewhere on the internet. Now you're safe. Bye now.